Now, from your local news leader, KAMR Local 4 News, Saturday Today starts now. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for waking up to Saturday Today on this morning. It is September the 14th, and it's yes. just a wonderful, wonderful day. It's a great day, y'all. Happy Saturday to you. Yes. Um, we have a lot to get to you this morning. Yes, but first, let's get a check of this morning's top stories. An employee that was contracted to deliver mail by the Postal Service has pleaded guilty to stealing mail containing cash, gift cards, and checks. Jorge Alarcon was arrested in June after he was allegedly found with stolen mail. He was an employee for Stageline, which has a contract with USPS to deliver mail. In May, a report was filed by the postmaster in Shamrock to the Office of Inspector General after multiple customers complained about mail that wasn't delivered. Investigators were able to determine that the mail route belonged to Alarcon Police say that he admitted that he had been stealing mail for several weeks. Police say customers lost nearly $1,000. Today is the first in a series of public meetings for feedback on the proposed Amarillo Civic Center complex. That story from your local election headquarters. It begins at 830 at the Amarillo Civic Center Hospitality Room. The public is invited and even encouraged to participate in the conversation. If you can't make it today, there is another public hearing coming up on Thursday at 1. For a full look at what's being proposed for the Civic Center and a list of all of those public engagement opportunities, myhighplains.com, the place to go for that. That is a look at this morning's news. We'll send it back over to Amberly and Judd. All right, thank you. So moving on, for Americans, 9-11 lives as an infamous day in our memories when our country and the world changed in a matter of hours. But think about this. Schools are now filled with students who never knew what life was like before the terror attacks and the aftermath that followed. For them, 9-11 is a history lesson, much like Pearl Harbor, except there's no set curriculum. Andrew Stiff takes us back to class to see how teachers are handling this subject. Max Petterino is a high school senior. On 9-11, he was one month old. I've known about it my whole life. He's known about it, but he and his friends are too young to have any firsthand memory of the attacks, which explains the field trip. The room that resonated with me the most was probably the room with all the faces. Max and his classmates went to the 9-11 Museum, a plan pioneered by social studies supervisor Lisa Torres. For me, the most powerful room um, is the room where the firefighters are the beeping. And you realize that the people who are attached to those locators are no longer here. Torres worked with 9-11 family members to develop a curriculum, a way to teach high schoolers as the anniversaries grow. There was one comment that said, overall, I thought this trip was very moving and really important for students to attend. Although we were not alive on the day of the attack, it's very important for us to be aware of the seriousness and sadness this day brought. You're teaching 9-11 like almost like you would any other event. It, it's becoming a kind of World War II or a Vietnam War. However, the teachers themselves, most of them have an experience, a personal connection to the event. Kids think they're invincible and nothing wrong ever happens to them. Tragedies are tragedies. And when they occur, they hit everybody. There were flags hanging from every home. Teacher Dawn Rivas and other educators took special training at the museum to relearn the timeline of events and also to try and remain objective. I actually went three times before I brought the kids because I wanted to get the lay of the land. I wanted to make sure that I would have my emotions in check. Kind of hit me hard, like how like so many lives were changed by it and how like massive an, of an attack it was. The magnitude still sinking in to a generation that hadn't yet been born when the towers fell. And the impact of the lesson plan took on deeper meaning for students at this New Jersey school. Three former students there lost their lives in the attacks. I was thinking about it um, on the day of 9-11, how students in school are now learning this as a piece of mm -hmm. history, as some of them weren't alive. And it's just interesting to sit and think, because I guess in school we have spoke about it, but they're, you know, like they said, there really isn't a curriculum. Right. Because we lived through it. And so yeah. we all just know. I mean, I was in first grade. You were in kindergarten? Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, I was six, but I still can remember what happened on that day, like vividly remember. And I mean, it changed everyone's lives, even though, you know, we were so far away from where the attack happened, all of us were affected. And I remember, you know, sitting in front of the TV and watching replays of it, you know, after we had gotten home and my mom crying. And as a child, you know, I didn't, I didn't think, I just knew something was happening and, you know, it's not, 
a child shouldn't have to think about stuff like that. Let mm -hmm. the adults worry about it, but it's just interesting to sit back and think about it. It like was that. definitely a moment in our history and now, you know, kids are learning about it. And I think that that legacy needs to live on yes. and people need to keep Very learning important. about it. Yeah. yeah. So. All right, time to check in on your weekend forecast. Chief Meteorologist John Harris joining us now. Hey, John. Good Saturday morning, everyone. I'm John Harris with your weekend weather, and today is going to be a gorgeous day to be outside. Now, this morning we do have the Tri-State Fair Parade that kicks off at 10 a.m. Temperatures will be running in the upper 70s and low 80s by 10 at noon. We'll be in the low to mid 80s, and at 5 o'clock, have about a high of 87. So, yes, it will be very warm this afternoon, but really perfect weather throughout the weekend for any type of outdoor event. Other temperatures today for our friends up at Guymon will see 90 degrees over at Childress the same. Maybe a thunderstorm working in late in the day for our friends out at Tucumcari 87, at Clayton a high of 84. And then tomorrow for Sunday, you bet it's still summer, even though it's September. We're looking at highs around 90 degrees in the city. Guymon 91 degrees tomorrow, Childress the same for our friends over at Clovis 87 degrees. Now checking out the rest of the seven day forecast. It's going to be a pretty nice week for the fair. On Monday, we'll see highs around 90. For Tuesday, breezy and warm, mid to upper 80s. On Wednesday, we may be tracking an isolated thunderstorm here or there, a high of 88. For Thursday, temperatures approaching 90. And for Friday, how about some sunshine and 87 degrees? Now, typically during fair week, we have that uh, downward swing in temperatures. We don't see that this year, so enjoy the fair. By the way, remember that KMR Local 4 night is on Thursday. And you can go over to myhighplains.com and get some discounts to get into the fair. By the way, I'll be doing the weather live at 4 or 5 and 6 on Thursday for KMR Local Fortnite. Enjoy your weekend, everyone. Listen to back over to Amberly and Judd. All right, John, thank you so much. So a new show coming to Fox 14 weekdays after uh, weekday afternoons at 3 o'clock. Very excited yeah. about it. Uh, here's a sneak peek at the Mel Robbins show. This is a show that you're not only going to learn things that you can put to use in your life immediately to change for the better, you're going to have a heck of a lot of fun hanging out with me. What I want you to know about me is that I really care about you, as I've met tens of thousands of people face to face. I've noticed that we all struggle with the same things. I'll do absolutely anything to get somebody to push through their fear. Mel Robbins has changed my life in so many ways. That's the thing that is exciting about me. I want to empower people to change the way that they see their future and what's possible for them. This is a show about you seeing what you want for yourself and for your life and you getting the tools in an entertaining way that you need to make the little changes that add up to massive change. So again, that show will air weekdays on Fox 14 at 3 p.m. starting September 16th. So um, let's get to some other stories that are trending today. I know we have a lot. Um, a team of scientists who concluded that the Loch Ness Monster could be a giant eel or maybe not released a video of their work on Thursday. So let's take a look. The video taken at Loch Ness last summer showed the lead scientist Neil Gimmel and his team taking a number of water samples. They wanted to determine the environmental DNA in the lake. He said they found large amounts of eel DNA. He said there was no evidence of a large reptilian monster, but the Loch Ness Monster could be a giant eel. He also said the fact that they did not find evidence of a Loch Ness Monster does not mean that it does not exist. Tourist businesses gave a sigh of relief at that observation. Just because we didn't find it doesn't mean it's not real. Yeah, so I don't know. I, where is that at again? Is Scotland. it Scotland? Scotland. Well, I, maybe John's we should. Been. I know. John, have you seen a Loch Ness Monster while you were there? I did not. He did oh. not. And you were on the lake and you didn't see it. Okay, well. Well, we need John to take a trip and find it. John says he didn't see it, but like they said, it may be real. Let's go. Do you want to go scuba diving? Yes. Let's do it. All right. Okay. Uh, another uh, trending story uh, coming from across the pond this morning. Airbus wants to know everything passengers do on its planes, right down to how often that they use the bathroom. Oh. The European plane maker is testing what it believes will be the, quote, cabin of the future, full of sensors that collect data on the habits of passengers. According to CNBC, the goal is to gather data with the laboratory latch and sensors and cameras on the outside of the bathrooms. Let's express that one uh, outside to monitor wait times. That information could save airlines money and alleviate pressure points for the passengers like uh, the mad scramble to find a place to put your overhead bin uh, luggage and also lines headed to the restroom on board. 
This is all in the testing phase, of course, and it's unclear if airlines will pay for the extra feature. I'm confused by it, Judd. They are wanting, for, so what I got from it is they are wanting to track habits of like, I guess people, how often people use the lavatory on an airplane. On an airplane, never. Yeah, and you know, uh, the overhead bin testing as well. Because yeah. you know, part of that problem is people, well, as soon as they get on the airplane, they just start sticking their bags wherever and it kind of bottlenecks the line. Right. Which is what takes boarding time so long. Chief aviation correspondent here. But I think, <laughs> I think everyone needs to realize when you're boarding a plane, you just need to be nice to everyone. Everyone's trying to get to a destination, you yes. know, and we all feel like our luggage is very important. So just let everyone get their overhead bin space, help that old woman if she needs help lifting it up, you know, absolutely not to the people that are rude on airplanes. And it's already stressful enough flying, mm -hmm. so don't make it even more stressful when just exactly. by being rude to one another. You never know. Exactly. Someone could be headed to a funeral or something. So exactly. You never know so, what's going on. Do you use the lavatory on an airplane? Um, I think literally maybe only once. Like I won't do it. I think I just once when I was headed to France and it's that's a long it's, flight it's, though. Yes, you, so you it's very cramped. You, yeah, not fun. Not fun no. at all. Okay, so moving on to getting somewhere in your car. Fans of the game Jeopardy don't have to wait to catch the live show. You know when they get to their destination, they can test their own knowledge while they drive. The show is releasing a hands-free voice-based app hosted by Alex Trebek himself. The questions come from actual Jeopardy games over its past 35 seasons. You can play a free trial game when you download the Drive Time app from the App Store or on the Google Play Store. The new game is out just in time for the start of the 36th season of Jeopardy. The season kicked off Monday, just a few days after Trebek announced that he finished treatment for pancreatic cancer. So, I mean, that's fun, but I just hope you're not distracted yeah, while driving. Obviously, the driver can play while still looking at the road. They can answer questions. Don't make the driver read. Right, but I think that would be nice for road trips, you know. We have our own personal game of Jeopardy in the newsroom, Jackie Kingston, every day. Yes. Uh, we watch Jeopardy and follow along with questions. We don't turn up the sound, so we have some good lip reading skills. Great. I'm not very good at Jeopardy, but... There it's we okay. Go. That's okay. Okay. All right. So don't forget, you can get all today's news, weather, and sports right here on myhighplanes.com. We made it pretty convenient for you. Don't forget to check us out on Alexa, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as well. Of course. Give us all a like, and thank you for spending your Saturday morning with us. We appreciate it. All right.